Can the latest sleep technology gizmos really help you get a better night's sleep? I'm Kurt the Cyber Guy. We're taking a look at the latest sleep technology fresh from CES, as well as some others that have developed out, either crowdsourced or stuff that we got in our hands because we heard about the research going on. There are Harvard studies that have happened, sleep studies that have proven that there is indeed clinical evidence that some of this technology will help you get a better night's sleep. What is the good stuff? What's the bad stuff? We'll talk about all of that. Plus, the absolute worst apps to use right before bedtime and the tiny easy tweak that we knew about but sort of forgot about on an iPhone or iPad that can promote a lot better sleep. Well, let's jump right into it. I'll I'll tell you now, I never have gotten a decent amount of sleep. It's Somehow I'm okay with that. I I like to wake up extremely early. And when I say early, my normal wake-up time is, oh, 3.45, maybe 4.15 in the morning. Uh, Part of that is that I've live on both coasts of the United States. So I get used to being on Eastern time, even though I find myself four days out of the week on Pacific time. Well, that's a little unusual. So that's probably not your game. But I've also garnered a lot of insights on how to capture sleep in unusual environments because pursuing technology and reporting on it, it means you're jumping on airplanes and going all over the place, uh, generally for long periods of time, getting a lot of work done, And then you just sort of crash. So you learn a lot about that. And then you get a chance to study what's going on right now when it comes to, well, what about these opioid opioid problems that include sleeping drugs? Well, take everything you know about sleeping drug Ambien, those natural supplements like melatonin, and the bad effects of blue light exposure before bedtime that we've all been told about. And take all that stuff and just set it aside. What I'm talking about is something that's completely new, and it's the answer to a better night's sleep that maybe we've been waiting for. This year, health and wellness at the Consumer Electronics Show was an enormous uh, display of new companies on the horizon, uh, uh, tech companies with familiar names that are embracing categories of health and wellness that include sleep, and one of them that we're looking at is Philips Smart Sleep. This is a headband. It's new sleep technology that pairs with their smart sleep app to track and react to your sleep patterns. Now, this isn't something that necessarily helps you get to bed faster. What it does instead is while you are at, while you're in bed, while you're asleep, it during your deep sleep, it emits soft tones that your brain hears and creates an enhanced effect to that natural slow wave deep sleep activity that's going on in your brain. excuse me, what that means is it's upgrading the quality of the sleep that you're getting so that you actually wake up a lot more energized, alert, you have greater focus. And at first when I heard about this, I thought, oh, come on, this is hocus pocus. I just just don't buy it until I have a closer look at it. And in this case, there is actual clinical proof that it works for people who don't get enough sleep because of their lifestyle. Other medical reasons are a different challenge, but this is for people who, like me, you just stay up late. You get distracted. You get, uh, you know, you get all kinds of influences in life, fun invitations, living on both coasts. You don't get a lot of sleep. I don't care. You got kids running around. You got little ones that wake you up all hours. So uh, everybody is challenged with getting a good night's sleep. Well, smart sleep provides... uh, best results for people ages 18 to 50. And I was like, well, why does it stop at 50? Well, apparently the body of someone older produces um, slow waves that are not as easily trackable or traceable by this new device. Uh, The Philips Smart Sleep is going to be available this spring. It is uh, $399. I'll probably see a little fluctuation in the price a little bit later, but it's something very exciting coming to our universe on the consumer side that I think will have some proven benefits right out of the gate. Now, you dig way, way back in time and you think about sleep technology, and the next one we're talking about is one of those white noise makers. It's just an absolute classic. People swear by it. I mean, there are people that just say, I can't sleep without it. You know what I'm talking about. This is Electrofan, and it's uh, the classic best selling white noise machine. It's got 10 fan sounds. It's got the 10 different white noises that you can tune into. 
and it drowns out noise from uh, around your environment. Loud people outside, street noise, startling noises that are in the house, uh, people talking, things like that. Uh, you can control the volume on it. It's got a sleep timer, or you can just leave it on all night. When I tested it, I just left it on all night. It actually helped me sleep longer, and, you know, it's just one of those things you got to get used to having that kind of noise going on in the room. Some people love it. Most people do. Other people can't stand that noise. They find it uh, distracting, and that's a, a small sample. Uh, it's got... Now in the design, an added bonus of a USB plug for uh, like plugging in your phone or something else on it that would distract you from a good night's sleep while it's in your room. Uh, and the Electrofan does plug it to the wall and it retails just under $50. They've also just come out with a brand new technology from this classic company that's been doing something really well for a long time. They've come out with Electrofan Kinder and a companion app to that. Kinder meaning children, yes. Download the app, control the new Electrofan Kinder. It's designed just for kids. Uh, it's smaller in size. It's very easy to fit into a nursery. Um, it has 75 white noise fan sounds, nature sounds, and lullabies that you control with the app. Uh, so you, the parent, could be somewhere else, and this is what the device does. It's also got a built-in nightlight inside of it. You can control that as well. And it plugs directly into an outlet, so it eliminates the danger of uh, an electrical cord being near a small child. Uh, that one retailing at just under $80, Electrofan Kender, just recently to market and already a big hit. Another new technology coming out <clears throat> is from Nightingale. And I mean, it's called Nightingale, and it's from Cambridge Sound. And if you know that name, they're the people who have really been leading the uh market in sound masking technology. Uh, Nightingale is her latest product that you would put into a room. And I like to say it's like putting a giant noise canceling set of headphones on your entire bedroom. It's uh, similar to how this works. Nightingale's got a 360 degree sound masking technology that comes out of it. It's a little device that plugs into the dual jack of a 110 AC outlet in your room and on the other end of it is the pass-through. So if you had stuff already plugged in, you just plug it back into the other side or the front side of the Nightingale. Uh, Cambridge Sound built this in a way to where it's really good for about 150 square feet. So a small room, you'll want to get two if you have a larger room. Um, and what they have put together on their list of annoying common household sounds that they have mastered uh, the art of neutralizing is pretty spectacular. Listen to this. It will work against snoring, text message sounds, whispers, ticking watches, talking, TVs, video games, dishwashers, a crying baby, leaves blowing around outside, rainfall, chirping birds, freeway traffic, and a lawnmower. And then, well, wait a minute. What if my smoke detector goes off? Is it, is it going to eliminate that noise? Good news is it's designed not to mask alarm clocks, smoke alarms, and security systems. Sleep studies, including one that was done by Harvard Medical School, uh, proves that people using the Nightingale in, a, in one of the studies um, fall asleep 38% faster than those not using it. And a sleep score lab report shows 64% reduction in noise sleep disruptions, things that wake you up in the middle of the night related to noise, and 26% better quality of sleep. And that seems to be the focus of a lot of the newer technology is getting that quality of the sleep. So for whatever sleep you're getting, how do you get that REM or that very deep sleep to be better and longer? Uh, Nightingale, as I mentioned, plugged in plugs into a standard dual AC power outlet. It's controlled by the app, or you could just use a web browser for it. It is a, just under $150 for the one that covers a 150 square foot room. Um, you do want to if you've got a larger room or standard size bedroom. And they price that in a dual package of just under $250. Um, most of these products, I believe this one had a 30-day uh, return policy. I'm not, I, I'll have to double check that one, but it's, uh, I'll post what it, what it says. But most of these allow you a, a pretty generous return policy. Um this one coming out of the Netherlands, pretty wild. Um, I don't actually, I haven't tested it. 
I just have watched the video. I've read about it. I'm aware of it. I've had discussions with uh, the people who represent the company. Um, this is the sleeping robot called Somnox. And it is a Kickstarter success story. And it's the world's first sleeping robot. They expect it to market in July at $495. Whoa, yeah, pricey peanut-shaped cuddle device. I used a teddy bear pretty successfully as a kid, and I'm sort of wondering where mine is now because that helped me get a good night's sleep way back when. But this is taking it to another level and really doing it well. It is um, a little peanut-shaped thing you cuddle with at night, and um, it combines a number of technologies that are proven to get your body and mind closer to the state of sleep, uh, including stuff that Buddhists do. And mimicking that level of of rhythm of breathing, as well as um, helping you with sounds such as heartbeats and lullabies and white noise and guided meditation that comes out of the device, and um, it, it's it's also really good with its multiple sensors to work um, all together for an improved sleep. Because it's got inside a CO sensor that monitors breathing. It's got an accelerom accelerometer to detect the movement that you have in the middle of the night. Clever algorithm puts that all together to help soothe um, someone into a better sleep using this robot. I'll have more information about it when I have a, a, a bit more time to actually give it a good testing. But it's, exci it's exciting despite pricey. And I just thought it was too cool looking uh, and weird looking not to feature it. And I, I love the underdogs. And you got four guys that are, you know, scrapping it together with their Internet startup to try to make a big difference. One of the developers uh, is on a mission to solve his mom's insomnia without her needing any drugs, which is a lot of the focus for many people. They'll use a supplement, but now maybe technology could be that thing that puts a gap between a good night's sleep and you without the use of anything other than the technology. No drugs, no addictive anything. You may get addicted to this, though, once you sleep on it. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the Zeke Smart Pillow. Priced at just under $200. It's a generously sized standard pillow. Inside are eight speakers, a microphone, a gyroscope, and battery, surrounded by memory foam comfort filling, they call it. Um, pillowcase is washable, but don't throw the pillow in the washing machine. That won't, won't be good. Um, this is made for a home sleep environment, but I couldn't help wonder how great it would be when I'm on those long haul flights. Cause inevitably I can get to sleep on board a, a plane and like absolute worst seat. I'd certainly rather not be in the worst seat, but I can sleep pretty much anywhere. And I will often, whether I'm in a flatbed or sitting upright, have noise canceling headsets on and inevitably I like to sleep on my side so those headsets I wake up and it's I either have a headache or my ear is just throbbing and sore from uh, having slept on the side of it um, this pillow would be amazing because it would help uh, drown out the noise around me and allow me to sleep on board um, but not have sore ears when I wake up that's just my imagination so I have to try it on board um, one of the best pros of this thing is if you have a snoring spouse, it's maybe the perfect solution. The Zeke has this subtle vibration that, that happens when it detects snoring, uh, and then it helps just gently promote your spouse switching positions so that they're not snoring. Uh, and apparently that works pretty well. And, uh, that way you're not waking up. And you're also not having to nudge somebody and getting the evil eye in the middle of the night. Worst apps to use before bedtime. This is according to a sleep survey done by Mattress Advisor. And this is one of those mattress review sites. There's a, there's a pile of those out there. But this one I I thought was, was kind of legit. It had a thousand sample uh, uh, survey people at subjects inside of it. And... And I don't know why it really ended up with these apps, but uh, people reported that these are the worst apps to use before bed, that when using these apps before bed, they got the worst night's sleep. YouTube, Pinterest, and Facebook. Yep. 
No mention of Instagram or other other ones like that or Twitter, but that's what ended up on that. And then remember back when, I mean, we all heard about this and we thought, oh, that's a cool, that's a cool um, new feature for an iPhone. And what what Apple did is they created what's called Night Shift. And this removes the blue light from the screen or filters out a lot of it from your, your screen on an iPhone or an iPad. And um, to do that, to turn on Night Shift, because I actually remember it coming out. I actually turned it on. And then for whatever reason, I no longer use it. And now I'm thinking, wow, I should turn that back on because I'm more focused on getting a better night's sleep. To turn on night shifts, go to settings, display and brightness, and then hit night shift. By default, night shift's going to trigger on at sunset and then turn off at sunrise, bringing back that bright blue light inside. Otherwise, it'll look like a warm, uh, yellowy, orangey kind of tone so that it's easier on the eyes, helping you get to bed a lot faster. Well, I hope some of this helps you get a better night's sleep. I know I'm sleeping better just for knowing about it, and I look forward to testing out a couple more things and sharing them with you. And uh, sweet dreams until then. And if you want to reach me socially, I am going to be at the party tonight and online. I'm at CyberGuy on Twitter, CyberGuy Official on Facebook, Kurt the CyberGuy on Instagram. If you see me on board the aircraft in my uh, weekly commute between New York and Los Angeles, please stop and say hello Also see me online at cyberguy.com. If you are feeling the love, share this with your friends, family members. If you're not, send it to them anyway. Thanks for listening. Cue the Cyber Guy bump out. Bye-bye.